takes you here today? Just struggling with a lot of things in my life. Um, can you tell me what things you're struggling with? Tell me more about it. Sorry. Um, it's just, it's really hard for me to balance out mm -hmm. my family, relationships, school, all that goes with school, test all that, and going to work yeah. 40 hours a week. It's just really hard balancing everything. Mm -hmm. So, from what I understand is that uh, you're struggling to balance your time between school, work, and your relationship. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Well, I can't imagine that can be really stressful. Yeah, it's, it's very stressful. Okay, so what we saw was an example of the clinician displaying congruence, which means that he can transmit clear and coherent messages while remaining genuine and authentic. That was an example of empathy. Roger defines it as the ability to live in another's life without judgment. We also saw the clinician use paraphrasing, meaning they repeated back what the client said, usually to seek clarification. It's, it's very stressful, especially now that I feel like my mom and my brothers don't really like me mm -hmm. because I work so much and I miss out on their football games and birthday parties mm -hmm. and things like that. And I feel like they take it out of me. Mm -hmm. They don't like me. So um, your mom and your brothers um, can be feeling frustrated that... Um, they can't see you as much as they would like. But um, you have to understand that they're your family and they love you no matter what. I get that they may love me, but their frustration for how much I work, it adds on to my stress and my frustrations. Mm -hmm. And it's already enough dealing with everything. Okay, so that was condition support. So when someone places a condition on when they don't like you, for example, the mom says that she doesn't like the client when the client chose to go to work. We just saw unconditional positive regard, which is when somebody has respect for another person and has no conditions on them. Have you expressed to your mother how stressful this situation can be for you? Um, I would like to. I'm just not too sure as to how to express it without, I don't know, hurting her feelings or mm -hmm. I don't know, causing more problems with my mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what are some ways that uh, you can express your feelings? Well, I'm sure she's going to understand no matter what. I just wish you would tell me exactly what to say to her. I'm not too sure how to express well, how what? I'm feeling. Uh -huh. Yeah. What do you think you should say to her? Or how, how can you express your feelings to her? I guess I can just explain exactly mm -hmm. what I'm feeling yeah. or what I'm thinking about the situation. I'm just really scared that she's going to be upset with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I guess I could just tell her the next time I feel like her frustrations are showing yeah. towards me. What we just saw was an example of organistic valuing process, which is when people know and understand that they have the ability in order to be actualized. So, in this session, um, our client came to the session with um, the problem that she had with uh, managing her time <coughs> and uh, uh, between school, work, and uh, relationships. And it kind of seemed like um, she felt like her mother didn't like her because uh, she couldn't spend a lot of time with her mother. And I could imagine how 
<coughs> stressful this was for her and uh, it just it was yeah I, I could feel it really that's why I'm like really yeah um, and she was keep asking me questions um, about how she could um, express her feelings to her mother and um, again it's really stressful can't see right um, yeah but I couldn't give her the exact answer of course I wanted her to really understand that uh, she had the power to control her life and her feelings um, so <coughs> at uh, the end of it uh, I uh, could really see that she realized she had the power to <clears throat> um, control her life and um, really talk to her mother and um, express her feelings. And um, I think um, that's it. Fully functioning. Fully functioning is when the person comes into awareness and takes control of decisions. For example, the client became fully functioning when she realized she needed to talk to her mom. Actualization. Actualization is a lifelong process where people strive for expansion and growth. This is something that a person-centered counselor tries to evoke with any client. What brings you here today? Um, just a lot of problems in my life. Oh yeah? What kind of problems? A lot. It's just really hard for me right now balancing uh -huh. out. It's just really hard for me right now balancing out school and work and family uh -huh. relationships. It's hard. <laughs> I can't imagine how stressful that is. <laughs> but I mean, it's life, right? <laughs> so um. Do you feel so, like you can't manage your time with school and stuff? Yeah, it's just really hard balancing everything out. Oh. Well, it's really stressful. Like, I don't know how you do it. It is really <coughs> hard. <coughs> huh? Well, especially now that my mom, my brothers, I feel like they don't like me mm -hmm. because I miss a lot of family events, football games, things like that. Because of work, I feel like they don't like me. Well, I wouldn't like you either if you did all that. Well, uh, I don't know what we can do with this. What do you suggest I do? I think you should just tell her that you're, you're done with her. Well, who's going to go through this? It's my mom. I can't be done with my mom. Why not? I mean, it's not like you can sit there and talk to her about your problems and uh, tell her how you feel. She's not going to understand you. Right? She might. Well, if you want to try and go through with it, then it's just up to you. Okay. I'll try it. Well, let's see how they take it. Oh, right, cool. Cool. <coughs> What we saw was a bad example of person-centered. Um, he was not—he was not showing any empathy towards the client. He was not paraphrasing. He wasn't professional at all. He was not showing any unconditional positive re regard or congruence. defines it as the ability to live in another's life without being, without the, okay, that was an example of empathy. Roger defines it. <laughs> so I'm like, ah! oh my God. <laughs> Have you expressed to your mother how stressful this situation is for you? Um... So, client came to, 
the session um, with the problem that uh, she had to <coughs> manage her time and um, with uh, manage her time with work, school, and relationships, and uh, it just it was so stressful that uh, I feel like. I, uh, it was just so hard for her, and, um, she was keep asking for questions, and, uh, <coughs> that, um, how she would express her feelings, but, uh, <coughs> I, uh, just, I was trying to make her understand <coughs> that, uh, she has to understand this, um, how she has to express herself, <laughs> and uh, at the end of the session, it seemed like she really realized that she has control <coughs> or her life, and uh, <coughs> yes, so she realized that uh, she can take control of uh, her life, and um, yes, but I mean, it's life, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's life, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Suck it up. Okay, okay. <laughs> like, I don't know how you do it. You guys, I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> I can't take her serious, okay? <laughs> Let me get into, like, acting mode, okay? Thank you.